A few years ago, I attended a conference on parish leadership, and one of the presenters was a priest from the United States who shared his frustration at times with parishioners not being more engaged in their life of faith and active in their parish community. He shared an experience that had happened to him the previous Lent. He and his parish pastoral council had worked together to put together a wonderful Lenten program, something for everyone to help spark their faith and to enter into the season of Lent. There would be a three-day parish mission, a Bible study, programs for children and teens, stations of the cross, opportunities to serve at the local soup kitchen and food bank. However, despite the pastor's preaching, publicity about the events, and encouragement after encouragement, very few parishioners were participating in the Lenten program. Being a bit frustrated and saddened by their lack of response, the pastor thought that he needed to address the situation, but he knew that preaching about it would probably just fall on more deaf ears, and he realized that he needed some way to capture the parishioner's attention. Knowing that there was a large billboard at the entrance of the church where parishioners would often stop and look, he decided that he would take it over for the weekend. He had placed six pictures with six short captions in the hope that it might get the parishioner's attention. The first picture was of two children playing in a sandbox with the caption, Too Young. The second picture was of a newly married couple with the caption, Too Much in Love. The third picture was a group of people at work with the caption, Too Busy at Work. The fourth picture was a family around the kitchen table with the caption, Too Busy with Family. The fifth picture was a group of seniors at a nursing home with the caption, Too Weak and Feeble. And the sixth and the final picture was a row of tombstones in a cemetery with the caption, Too Late. Though it might have been a bit bold and in your face, it did capture the attention of his parishioners. And over time, the pastor was able to help his parishioners take more seriously their faith and to make a greater priority in being disciples of Jesus and living it out day by day, regardless of the seasons or times of life that they were living. I think in many ways, this is the same message at the heart of our gospel this evening, as Jesus is trying to get across to his apostles as he talks about the demands and the cost of being his disciples and following him day by day. In this 10th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel that we have been reading from from the past two Sundays and continue today, Jesus is preparing to send the apostles for the first time, two by two, out to the various towns and villages to preach and to teach. He warned them last Sunday about the reaction that they may get from those that they would encounter. And now, just before sending them out, Jesus wants to know if these 12 men are firmly committed to the mission and are prepared regardless of the cost to do whatever it is that is required of them in order to be faithful to Jesus' ministry and his mission. For Jesus knew with these men how easy it was for them to get their priorities out of order. Jesus knew how easy it was for them to confuse what was truly important and to miss the mark. And so just before sending them out, he wants them to reevaluate and reaffirm their commitment and their dedication to him and his mission. Nothing, Jesus says, no matter how good as it can be, can take away from their commitment, their discipleship, their faith, and having him at the center and the heart of their lives. 
And certainly, in our day and age, we hear an awful lot about setting priorities and being able to manage them efficiently and effectively. There are a myriad of gurus and self-help books and worships that try to address this issue to better equip us at setting and remaining faithful to our priorities. Some time ago, I was reading a book on time management, and the author suggested that as human beings, we are only capable of having three priorities at a time in our life. Anything more simply becomes unmanageable, and we simply peter off. She went on to say that for most people, the priorities number one and two will be their family and will be their work. And so this leaves only room for one other priority. For some, she says, it might be exercise. For others, it might be a sport. For others, it might be friends. For others, it might be some type of community service. But the bottom line is that one only has room for one additional priority if family and work occupy those first two places. And in order to choose that third priority, it means that one also then has to let go of other things as a priority because we cannot juggle so many priorities. But what is the priority that is going to be chosen and what are the ones that are going to be left behind? Those are oftentimes difficult choices because ultimately we want it all, but we know that we cannot do it all. And moreover, as we look at all of those priorities, where does the priority of our faith, where does the priority of our discipleship, where does our priority of following in the footsteps of Jesus take place in our lives? And how is it that it shapes and molds us if we are going to be his disciples? And this ultimately is the question that Jesus poses in our gospel, that he poses long ago to the apostles, and that he poses to us anew tonight, just as the pastor of the parish posed it to his parishioners that Lenten season. For we recognize, like Jesus did long ago, that as important as our family is, as important as our work is, as important as our recreation is, as important as those other things are in our lives, if God does not hold that central and primary priority, then all of those other things will simply fall apart and it will lead us to a sense of emptiness. It will lead us to a sense of longing. It will lead us to a sense of lacking. But if we are able to keep God and God alone at the center and the heart of our lives, then our family, then our work, then our recreation, then our finances, then our friends and our hobbies will all find its rightful place. And this is why Jesus says that if you love your family more than me, you cannot be my disciple. This is why Jesus says if you're not willing to take up your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Because he doesn't want just a little part of us, but he wants all of us. And when we give him all of us, he gives us everything in return. But that is the choice that we have to make. Will we give him that primary place in our heart, in our lives? Will he be the lens in which we see everything and make all of the other decisions of our life? And if we do, then we will experience a sense of peace, a sense of joy, a sense of fulfillment in our lives. But if we choose those other things as good as they can be, we will always be lacking. We will always be looking for something more. And so the challenge and the invitation that we face not only this evening, but every day of our lives is how is it that we keep God at the center, at the heart of our lives? This does not mean that we have to come to church and spend 24 hours a day, that we have to pray 300 rosaries a day, or that we have to do all of these works moment by moment, day by day. 
But what it does mean is that we need to give a priority to our relationship with the Lord and allow it to be the vessel that shapes us in all of the other things. And so to be a fruitful, faithful, intentional disciple of Jesus means that we commit ourselves each and every day, even if it's for 15 minutes, to a life of prayer. It means that we commit ourselves at minimum each week to coming to Sunday Mass, and more often if we can. It means that we spend some time growing our spiritual lives by reading and reflecting on the scriptures, the life of the saints, some holy book or meditation. It means that we are involved in the spiritual and the corporal works of mercy. It means, as we heard about in our first reading and at the end of our gospel, that we become people of hospitality, welcoming others, and in welcoming them, we welcome Christ. These are the tangible ways that you and I show that God is at the center and the heart of our lives. It goes to show then how we are desiring to be his witnesses and his disciples, so that we can not only build up his kingdom here and now, but one day that we can enjoy it for all of eternity. And so perhaps this week, we will find some moments of quiet to reflect on our lives, to ask ourselves those challenging questions. What are those priorities, and how is it that they shape who we are and our lives of faith? How is it that I'm growing in my spiritual life so that I can be fed and nourished by my God, so that I can have the strength day by day to go out and to be his witnesses and to build his kingdom? We know that alone and left to our own devices, we cannot do this. It is only by God's help and God's grace. And that is why we come here tonight to be fed and nourished and challenged by the scriptures, to receive the body and blood of Jesus, to give us that food for the journey, so that then we can be prepared to allow him to be at the center and the heart of our lives and to go and to be his presence to others.